Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, joining the session. My name is David Malik. I'm the uh, Chief Business Officer for BioLine RX, and I'll try to use the next 15 minutes to explain uh, more about the immune oncology aspects of what we're doing at BioLine. We're doing a lot of different things at BioLine, but the focus of this session obviously revolves uh, around the oncology and specifically immune oncology. Uh, I would take a couple minutes just to tell you a little bit about the company for those who are not familiar or not updated. Um, Bialan RX is an Israeli-based company uh, that was founded uh, about 13 years ago by a number of uh, um, leaders in the uh, Israeli life sciences industry. It's traded both on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange and uh, as of the last uh, five years or so, uh, also traded on NASDAQ. Um, the concept behind the company is basically to be a bridge between early stage uh, innovations primarily coming from Israel and um, uh, larger pharmaceutical global companies. So basically what we do is we uh, search high quality innovative uh, projects, uh, again primarily in Israel, uh, in a variety of fields that they'll describe and uh, try to uh, advance them forward, create uh, more of a pharmaceutical product out of them uh, and eventually partner them uh, at some point with a uh, uh, leader in this field. Uh, we have also, in the last um, 12 to 18 months, signed a number of uh, uh, partnerships. Uh, in uh, December 2014, we've signed a, a partnership we're very excited about with uh, Novartis Pharma, uh, in which we uh, share uh, both uh, scouting efforts and development uh, with, uh, with Novartis in a variety of fields. Um, and we're also happy to have uh, Novartis um, representatives uh, join us to this meeting as well. Uh, we have outlined as one of our uh, dermatology projects to Omega Pharma, which is the uh, larger OTC com largest OTC company in uh, Europe that was uh, uh, later bought by Perigo, so it's now a Perigo project. Uh, and then we've also recently signed a uh, collaboration with uh, Merck, uh, MSD, um, in uh, pancreatic cancer where we will combine BL8040, which will be the subject of this discussion, and um, Keytruda, which is their PD-1 uh, inhibitor, uh, at least in pancreatic cancer to begin with. Um, this is our pipeline in a, a nutshell, but uh, again, we'll focus on our uh, lead uh, molecule, which is BL8040. We are investigating this molecule in a variety of indications in oncology. We also have other projects. Our focus in the last few years has been really on immunology and oncology, and also obviously on the interface between the two. But we're not just doing immune oncology. Um, for the purpose, again, of this session, I will focus uh, our presentation on the data and the directions that we have, specifically with BL8040 and specifically in immune oncology. So, uh, what is BL8040 before we dive into the immune oncology angle? Uh, BL8040 is a um, cyclic peptide, subcutaneously uh, administered. Um, this was actually uh, invented here in Israel. Uh, it's a good example of our model by uh, um, a company called Biocon Therapeutics that are still uh, very good partners of us, of ours, that we uh, still collaborate, I think, to a large extent, and we appreciate their uh, continued partnership. Uh, and this uh, compound is really potentially used for a large variety uh, of uh, um, oncological indications, both hematological and solid indication both with an immune oncology angle and without an immune oncology angle, and we are exploring a number of these. Uh, we are currently in a, uh, conducting a number of phase two studies uh, under an IND uh, in the US, uh, Israel, and Europe. Uh, we think this is the best in class CX04 um, antagonist with a very high affinity uh, to the uh, target and long receptor occupancy. Um, we think in general, before we dive into immune oncology, that this drug really, if I had to kind of sum it up, makes other drugs uh, um, much, much better. It could be chemotherapies, could be targeted therapies, and as we'll talk about today, could be uh, immune oncology agents, and, and we'll talk about that. But really, the, the key uh, aspect here is the uh, very interesting effect it has on the uh, tumor marker environment and the bone marrow in general. And uh, I think we've been able to show in humans as well uh, clinical superiority in immune cell mobilization, which, as we'll talk about, is quite important uh, when we combine this with um, uh, checkpoint inhibitors and other immune oncology agents. So uh, the clinical development program for BL8040 includes a variety of studies. These are all clinical studies. We have already completed three uh, studies in uh, several indications recently in real refractory AML. Uh, that was uh, quite successful. Uh, results will be presented at the um, European Hematology Association meeting in uh, next month. Um, but the focus, again, here uh, of this discussion is going to be on this uh, study here in uh, this little box in red, in pancreatic cancer in combination with Keytruda. And this, uh, we're going to try to talk about what the rationale behind that is and what we're trying to do here, uh, at least in the beginning, with Merck. 
So uh, why do we think this in, uh, agent is interesting in immuno-oncology? I think one thing that's important to mention when we talk about this agent, it is not uh, an immune cell activator. It has a very different approach and we think a different role in uh, the field of immuno-oncology, but we think it has a really important role that can combine with a large variety of different uh, immuno-oncology agents, uh, checkpoints or not checkpoint inhibitors, T cells or others. Um, there are really three mechanisms of action by which we think this compound uh, has an effect uh, in, in immuno-oncology. The first one, it's not on this chart, is um, it basically, it's an immunostimulant. So it basically uh, uh, mobilizes immune cells in very uh, high quantities and proportions from the bone marrow into the peripheral blood. And thus, obviously, if you combine that with an agent that could activate those um, uh, immune cells, uh, we have a lot more of these cells in the circulation, thus making the therapy uh, much more significant. We've seen this in clinical studies in humans to be superior to any other uh, CXCR4 antagonist or any other agent that we know of in mobilizing T cells, B cells, immature dendritic cells, and NK cells, so pretty much any sort of um, immune cell that you think of. The other two mechanisms really revolve around the tumor marker environment, and I'll just take a second to describe them generally, and we'll show a little bit of uh, data to support each and every uh, one of these uh, mechanisms. But the first thing is that we modify, or BL8040 modifies the microenvironment. And if, uh, if we look at this uh, uh, scheme here, um, you'll see in uh, um, depicted, if this thing would work, does it? Yeah. So you'll see these cells here and here. Um, these are uh, Tregs or uh, myeloderob suppressor cells. These are cells that are uh, um, uh, exist in the uh, tumor microenvironment and, in essence, deactivate T cells and prevent the, uh, the uh, efficient uh, um, activity and efficacy of, of T cells on uh, the tumor cells. And one thing that uh, BL8040 does is it inhibits basically these cells and uh, prevents them from doing this uh, suppressive activity and again makes the T cells more effective uh, assuming they've been activated. The other thing that uh, it is doing, it is also um, um, binding to SDF1. SDF1 is the ligand of uh, CXCR4 depicted here in, in, in green. And what you can see is that the uh, tumors on the edge of the tumors, uh, uh, there's a secretion of uh, SDF1 that basically creates some sort of a rim. It's, it's really an immunological or even a physical rim around the tumor that prevents the T cells that are depicted here in blue from physically penetrating the tumors. And we'll show some data to, to uh, elucidate that. And by basically binding to SDF1, we prevent them from uh, um, creating this rim. And if, if you see here, the rim is basically dismantled. The SDF1s are being uh, distributed. The uh, MDSCs and the Tregs are uh, eliminated from the tumor microenvironment, and this uh, uh, allows the activated T cells basically to penetrate the tumor and do what they're supposed to do. Uh, so that's basically the general concept as to how we could potentiate um, immune oncology or checkpoint inhibitors agents and make them uh, more efficient in doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and I'll try to show some data to support each and every uh, MOA here, but just in briefly, this is uh, clinical data that we've been able to generate um, around supporting the mobilization. And what you can see here is just an example of um, the uh, black uh, lines here are basically the control, and you can see the uh, mobilization of the blood, uh, the, the blood levels of uh, various immune cells, um, T cells, B cells, and uh, NK cells. And you can see that in all of these cell types and pretty much in all um, uh, dose levels, there is a very robust mobilization and an increase in the amount of these immune cells in the system. And these, when compared to other CXCR4 inhibitors, are significantly higher, several fold higher than any other mobilizer that we are um, aware of. And this is also done with a very long receptor occupancy that we were able to establish in humans. So again, this would give us a significantly higher amount of, let's say, T cells if you're looking at PD-1s and PD-L1s, but also other immune cells in the uh, peripheral blood to begin with. The second MRA is around how do we modify uh, the uh, tumor uh, microenvironment in a way that's less suppressive to uh, the immune cells. Um, and here, uh, what we can see here is, uh, the first thing is uh, just a staining of SDF1. This is in uh, ovarian cancer, but uh, we can see this in other uh, tumor types like uh, pancreatic cancer and others. Um, and there's a, a clear correlation between uh, the level of SDF1 expression and uh, the survival or the poor survival of patients. And basically what we can see uh, also here is that uh, there's a high expression of CXCR4, and then when CXCR4 is inhibited, 
um, there is a uh, um, inhibition of the migration of the MDSC, so basically all these cells that suppress the activity of the immune cells, and we can see a significant reduction in those, thus again making the T cells more effective in uh, addressing the tumor. And then the third mechanism, um, as we talked about, is penetrating the tumor and allowing the T cells to physically penetrate the tumor. This is in, in uh, a mice model. And basically, uh, this particular case, it's a pancreatic cancer model, uh, which again correlates with the clinical study that we're planning to do. And basically, what you can see here is um, that uh, before the uh, BL8040 is introduced, um, there's really T cells here are stained in red, and there's really no presence of the T cells within the tumor. Uh, obviously, even if you activate these T cells and they are not present within the tumor, their efficacy is going to be significantly reduced. Once we combine BL8040 with, in this case, a PD-1 um, antibody, we can bring the T cells physically into the tumor in much higher numbers. And obviously, if they're uh, properly activated by the PD-1, we should see, and we are seeing it in, in, uh, in models, an improved efficacy of this combination versus the, uh, the single agent PD-1 um, activity. This is particularly true in, in, in tumors that secrete a high level of FCF1. As I mentioned, pancreas is one of them, ovarian is another type, but there are uh, uh, various types of, of tumors like that where uh, we have seen in clinical results that the uh, efficacy of PD-1 and the PD-L1s has been really uh, minuscule and uh, sometimes non-existent. And we think and we uh, hope that the combination of uh, BL8040 as a best-in-class CXCO4 with uh, some of these agents would uh, allow uh, um, these tumors to be addressed in a much better way than they are today. Uh, this is kind of a quantification, basically, of, of what we saw earlier, and we're, uh, again, looking at uh, different types of uh, immune cells, be it uh, T cells or NK cells or macrophages or dendritic cells, uh, but across all immune cell types, we're seeing a, a really significant increase. Uh, the bars in red show what, what are the levels when uh, BL8040 is introduced. And again, we can see these uh, increase by uh, several fold, uh, anywhere between um, a three and, and uh, almost to a three fold to almost an order of magnitude. So uh, these are all the reasons that we think that uh, BL8040 would be a, a very good uh, compound to combine with uh, PD-1s. I should say that we've already established safety and dosing in other studies that we've done, and all of this has really led to, um, uh, we were happy to hear that not only we think that this makes a good idea, but also Merck thinks that this uh, could be a good idea. And that led us to uh, sign the deal with Merck uh, earlier this year. Um, and I'm sure everybody who's at least uh, present in this session is aware that uh, Merck has uh, launched a Keytruda um, um, not that long ago uh, with really interesting results in a large uh, set of tumors. but. Um, not that great results in uh, for tumors, for example, like pancreatic cancer, which is not different than other PD-1s um, have uh, been able to establish. And um, Merck has been interested enough in this combination to uh, uh, go into this partnership with us in which we will uh, study the combination of BL8040 and Keytruda uh, in a uh, pancreatic cancer uh, clinical study, um, uh, open-label, multi-center, multi single-arm uh, trial. It's going to be the, uh, run in the U.S. and uh, some additional countries uh, where we will look at the combined efficacy, but also we would also look to verify a lot of the things that we showed you here on the mechanism and try to measure those in humans. Um, and uh, agreement also allows both parties to continue the phase three and pivotal registrational studies uh, at any point. And our plan is to expand this uh, immune oncology um, collaboration program and expand that to additional tumors, additional compounds, um, and really um, uh, maximize on what we think is a great potential for BL8040 uh, in immune oncology in combination with um, other agents. So with that, I end uh, leaving 1.1 uh, uh, minutes uh, for either questions or um, some other guy that wants to have 16 minutes of fun. Any questions? Super. Have a great day.